so this is testing out the new Lettuce Anamorphex adapter. This is at F2.8, at about 13 mil on the Tokina 11 to 16. The lens rammed right up against the back. The Lettuce set to minus one, which seems to be the least vignetting in this configuration. I think you can get an infinity focus. It's pretty good. So this, uh, this plate's fairly circular. Um, so hopefully you can see there that the aspect ratio is 2.15 to 1 um, Which is slightly off the 1.33 squeeze. I think it's 1.20 something like that the flare uh, I've still got a slightly smudged lens at The front element there. It's kind of difficult to get clean. Let's do some stuff from far away So this is the multi-coated version of the Amorphex. Um, so there shouldn't be that much flare. And here's really close in. And here's a good example of um, anamorphic flare where you've got the spherical flare at the bottom right there and the anamorphic flare just on, on the right, the blue streak. You get the two, the separation of the flares there. Happy, happy. Close focus wise, I'm actually holding my hand up against the front of the matte box. So extremely close focus, totally achievable. And that's just with the lens still set to minus one just to avoid vignetting as much as possible. Eye shots. Okay, now um, this is set um, to the near setting. So you can see your hands in focus there. And we're, I mean, we're getting crazy distortion there. That's all in focus, but my, my hand's actually within the matte box at this stage. Uh, very, very, very close to the front element. And you can see just here, um, that's actually, I, I can't actually put my hand through to this, this edge here. That, that's um, so before the back element. Still pull all the way out, and this is at 2.8. So pr pretty. Crazy distortion at this this point. I don't know when you would ever use this. So I, I'm just going to pull that back around. You can see the vignetting dis disappearing, the frame changing side. So this is all the way at the far end, 11 mil on the Tokina, um, with the setting at far on the front element, and this is 16 there. Um, so I would say it's probably usable about there. It's so about 13 mil. Seems to be the widest you can get with the Tokina, um, and that's with Anamorphix like ram right up against it. I do have one filter on there, just a UV filter on the front of the Tokina, but that's it. And I don't have a clamp for this size of lens uh, and the Anamorphix, so it might be slightly misaligned, but it's just rammed right up against the back. This is a 50mm Zuiko. With longer lenses like this, you start to notice weird stuff happening here. The front element is now sort of quite far away from the front of this 50mm lens um, and set to uh, 10 near because this microphone's pretty close, at about sort of three feet away from the front of the camera. Uh, so here is just a really good example of tall bokeh there and wide bokeh there. Um, I'm sure this effect is probably explained else, elsewhere on the internet. Um, I find it kind of fascinating. So that's it, as circular as I can get it. So once I've got it as circular as possible, I'm going to just shift the, the front element round until it reaches its sharpest point, which I think is about there. And just have a quick touch of the focus again. Something like that. So that I think that's about as sharp as I'm going to get that image at about three feet away. So you can hopefully see, I'm just going to move forward and back so you can see, I'm guessing it's about there. So it should be relatively sharp. But the good thing is 
not sharp enough to um, get Mwari. It kind of kills all the, the Mwari you usually get in the BMC sensor, which is great. Uh, I'll show you um, infinite focus. So we get tall here, wide here, very slightly. Um, and we can sort of focus in almost like a tilt shift. It's pretty weird. Uh, I haven't fully researched what exactly this is doing, but you can see the effect there. Try and focus so it's at the most circular point there. Now that it's set fully to negative 10 or far, just there, I'm going to refocus with the lens and that's bang on infinity at this stage. So there we go. And I'm just going to pull this all the way. So this is uh, extremely close, maybe 10 centimeters from the lens. It's on a 28 mil Zico Prime. Just to show you the um, the setup of the lens here, this is with the 28 28 mil lens. Um, and just to show you um, as you as you move this ring here, so the numbers I'm referring to on the top here, near far. That does is physically moves that back element forward and backwards, kind of like moving a, I, I guess like a diopter um, closer and further away from the lens uh, to get your different focal ranges. So it's really smooth action on it, and uh, yeah. So one thing, lettuce. Sorry, but it's not 1.33. Um, okay, right, so this is our first uh, raw anamorphic test um, and Robo standing in and we're just going to move the um, the lettuce front element. Okay, um, so this is a close focus test with exactly the same lens setup. Um, uh, we're about five centimeters away from the front of the matte box on the lettuce and we're at zero so we're going to go all the way uh, to negative nine, I think it is, the furthest we can go. And refocus there. That still seems to be, yeah, you don't seem to need to have to refocus. That just So that's at the far setting. And then we're going back through zero and all the way to 10, positive 10, uh, which is supposed to be for near stuff. So yeah, that's... Right enough, that is looking a lot better. Um, but we've got vignetting, so I'd push into like 16 there and refocus. What so that's, that's looking pretty pretty sharp there. But what, what happens if I. Just wiggle it crazily. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So that's about as fast as I can move it without ripping it off its mount. Okay, doke, so um, the same test, but just f really far away. Um, so we'll just see how the sharpness holds up when you're focusing across a room. So we must be like seven or eight meters away from uh, the front of the lens. Um, okay, so this is at zero once more. So we'll shift that all the way around to negative nine. See what that looks like, and we'll shift it all the way to positive 10. Um, and we'll zoom in just to compensate and just refocus with the lens. There we go. Okay, having noticed a massive shift in aspect ratio depending on where you have the front element of the lettuce um, set, uh, we're gonna do a quick shift using this uh, film canister to um, or real holder, what would you call that? The thing that goes on the thing. The thing that goes on the projector. I don't know, we, fa we found it. We found one. Um, yeah, so uh, this is set to 10 at the moment, and we're going to do a quick shift to negative 9, as far as we can get it. And you'll notice the perspective shift. 
or the aspect ratio shift. Uh, let's do that again, all the way back. So this is at uh, the near setting, and this is at the far setting. Okay, we're going to do the test one more time at 11 mil, just so you can see the the actual element moving in the sort of vignette there. Um, okay, so this is at 10 or near, and I'm going to shift all the way around to zero, and then to negative nine, just there. And now back, so that far, all the way around to near.